Good afternoon to everyone. I show 530. Everybody else? What'd you say, Miss Mary Jo? And a half. Okay, why don't we go ahead? Um, the Pine Bluff City Council meeting for September the 8th, 2015 is hereby called to order. May we have roll call, please? Alderman Bryant. Here. Alderman Stepp. Alderman Walker. Alderman Boyd. Alderman Brown Sr. Alderman Mays. Here. Alderman Holcomb. Alderman Boyd Jr. Brown Jr. here. <laughs> Excuse me, why y'all start the meeting and you ain't got a quorum that's sitting at the table? I don't understand that. You don't start a meeting until your quorum is at the table. I don't care what you're outdoors, you don't start the meeting until the quorum is in. Because you, you don't know where you're going to have a meeting or not. You got to have a quorum to start a meeting. So y'all start the meeting without a quorum. Whenever you have a roll call, you don't know where you're It don't matter. Don't you don't need to start it until the quorum gets in the building. We have established a quorum. And now we have, now we probably just getting started. <laughs> Each of you have a, a copy of the minutes from August the 17th, 2015. So it's, it's been properly moved and second that the minutes uh, as presented be approved. Floor is now open for discussion. Hearing none, all in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Additionally, uh, uh, you have in your packet minutes from the special called meeting from August the 24th, 2015. So Do we have a motion? Second. Okay. It's been properly moved and second that the minutes from August the 14th special called meeting, the first one on August the 24th be approved. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. Any no's? Approved. Okay. And then we have one more. Oh, it was attached to that one. Okay. Then we have in your packet the second special called meeting minutes from August the 24th, 2015. Do we have a motion to approve? So moved. Okay. Do we have a second? Second. Okay. It's been properly moved and second that the minutes from the second special called meeting on August the 24th be approved. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Like sign. Motion carries. Okay. Moving on to committee reports, ways and means. Alderman Brummett. Yes, Mayor. We have four budget adjustments that were in your packets. Uh, the first one is involving the transit fund, transit grant funds carryover, which we d had on the agenda last time and decided to review it again this time. The total amount uh, the adjustment requested is 85991 and you see the copy there with the various accounts that the money will be moved from to meet the requirements. I move we accept this budget adjustment. Second. It's been properly moved and second that the budget adjustment for transit in the amount of $85,991 be approved. Floor is now open for discussion. Hearing none, all in favor say aye. Aye. Any no. no. Okay. May we have roll call, please? Alderman Drummond? Aye. Alderman Walker? No. Alderman Brown, Sr.? Alderman Mays. Alderman Mays. Alderman Brown Jr. Aye. Three to two. It doesn't pass. Okay. Doesn't pass. I guess is the second one the CDBG monies that um, 
carry over grant funds from 2014 to 2015. Uh, you see the attachment with all of the various expenditures and so on. It, I move we accept this budget adjustment from the CDBG grant funds. Second. It's been properly moved and second that the carryover for community development uh, carryover grant funds from 2014 to 2015 be approved. Floor is now open for discussion. Hearing none, all in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Okay, Mayor, we have a request from the fire department. Um, there's various areas in the department that are not significant amounts of money that are over budget and the department has elected to utilize money and unused overtime to be able to balance those accounts. Uh, this is to fund overtime and machinery maintenance through the end of this year. I move we accept this budget adjustment from the fire department. Second. It's been properly moved and second that a budget adjustment for the fire department for overtime be approved. Floor is now open for discussion. Hearing none, all in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Mayor, we have a request from the street department concerning a 2011 Caterpillar grader. Um, as I understand, this was actually um, repaired in 2014, if I read it correctly, and that they got the bill in 15, so they're having to do a budget adjustment to cover the uh, to be able to pay the bill. Uh, the total amount, $16,000, is a request to be able to meet the uh, requirements to fix the Caterpillar grader <coughs> in the street department. And I move we accept this budget adjustment. Second. It's been properly moved and second that a budget adjustment for the street department in the amount of $16,000 be approved. Floor is now open for discussion. Um, Alderman Bromwich said uh, that this was in 14, and which the invoice says uh, 12, 13, 14, which that part is true. Uh, but with this Caterpillar, uh, everything has been replaced in, in with this Caterpillar uh, to uh, valve, screws, uh, it, it, all plates, and all types of things. Uh, to me, they built... Uh, they had bolts, discs, screens, filters, rings, washers, and everything else to uh, the tune of $16,000. It would have been better for us to, uh, to buy one. And I don't know why it's just coming up now since it was a 2011. So um, I really can't support it. It's a 2011 caterpillar. I know, caterpillar. I know it. Okay, but it was done, the work was done in 2014. I understand that. Okay. Mayor, can we get an explanation from uh, Mr. Rose? Um, I'm going to ask if Mr. Johnny would come up, please. Uh huh. Thank you. Let Johnny explain to you exactly what happened. Right. When I looked at the paperwork, it looked to me like that it was actually requested in 14 that they got the bill in 15. That's what I was looking at. Okay. Go ahead, Johnny. What, what is a greater? Uh -huh. uh, the bill actually got uh, invoiced in 14, but we paid it in 15. Can you talk to the mic, please? I'm sorry. Did you say paid? You ha already have paid it. We paid it in 2015, but the actual invoice for the parts and labor was in 14, and they billed us, and it came in 2015. Okay, so we had well, to pay what is the budget adjustment for? You're saying they, they, are, they have already been paid, correct? Yes. Okay. We're, well, we're, we're compensating that because it actually should have been paid in 14 because the invoice was due in 14. Okay. So we didn't get the parts and everything. Okay, so when did you actually pay it? If you have April the 2nd, 15, is that when it was paid? 
Yes, April two, April second, two thousand fifteen. Okay. Uh, so what is the need for this budget adjustment at yes. this time? See, that money should have came out of the two thousand fourteen budget, where it's now coming out of the two thousand fifteen. Actually, should have came out of the two thousand fourteen. But you paid it in fourteen. We paid in fifteen. You paid in fifteen. Yes, ma'am. Uh, but I'm saying, if you've already paid it. Uh, and you're coming for a budget adjustment. Where is the money coming from? What, what line item is the money coming from? Well, in actuality, the, we paid it in 2015. We should have actually paid it in 14. That way, we would have to compensate this 2015 for the money. I see, but I'm still saying you paid it from what? We paid it in 2015. I mean, from what, uh, what line item? That we paid from. Uh, we paid it from our uh, heavy maintenance equipment account. Okay. So if you paid it from your heavy uh, maintenance equipment account, uh, why would you know, why would we be voting for? Is this reimbursement or what? Yes, reimbursement because in our 2015 it should have been paid in 14, where we're having to take the money out of our 2015 budget to pay for it where the money should have came out of 14. Okay, um, if, if, uh, if you had the money in uh, 14, uh, why was it not carried over? If it wasn't carried over, what? We budgeted for 2015. We didn't budget that in, because it was budgeted for 2014 out of the heavy maintenance account. Okay, that's what I'm saying. It was budgeted for 14, but you didn't pay it until didn't 15. Until 15. Yeah. Okay. So uh, if it was budgeted in 14, what happened with the money in the 14 budget? We, we budgeted for 2015. I'm really not understanding your question. Okay, I, under I understand. I understand that you don't. Uh, but uh, this is, if you, if you had the money in 14 budget uh, and they knew that it was that it was going to be owed, that that money should have been put aside uh, or paid. If it wasn't paid in 14, it should have been put aside. So I'm saying what happened to the money that was in 14 budget that you didn't pay it? Why don't we ask Mr. Miller, because he, he knows about the carryover funds. Steve, can you answer that? The 2014 carryover included all the, um, you know, uh, revenue in excess of expense, and uh, that item could have been set <coughs> aside and separated out in the carryover to increase the budget in 15 for repair and maintenance, but all the carryover was assigned to overlay. Um, so basically, uh, you know, the entire carryover from 2014 into 2015 went into the overlay budget. Okay, well, actually, um, this question should have been answered by uh, Rick, since he's running the department. Okay, I'll, I'll have no more questions. Any other questions for Mr. Johnny? Rick, the, the grader, that's, uh, explain what the grader is. And is it is it running now, is it down? Yeah, I mean. Yeah, it's running now. It's uh. It had to have a transmission rebuild in it. The machine cost over $250,000, and so $16,000 isn't a lot of money to spend on a machine of that, that magnitude. So that's what you were picking the uh, streets? It's used in the wintertime to uh, scrape the ice and all off the road. It's used when we cut the shoulders on the roads to do overlay. It's used pretty regular. Okay, any other questions? Yes, sir. Again, uh, as Zartman Walker asked, uh, why wasn't it paid in 14? We got the bill in December of 2014. I talked with Steve about it, and uh, it was supposed to be paid out of that year's budget because there was enough money in our 14 budget, but because it wasn't billed until 15, that's when it was paid. So you retained a balance? You retained a balance from 14? We already had that much in it, but it was carried over to 15. 
Now we're at the end of 15. Budget. We're nearing the end of 15. Are you just paying for it? No, we paid for it back in, I think, April was when it was paid for. And I think Alderman Walk was asking the question, where did the money come from? You, you took it out of your budget, out of the, the uh, street budget? <clears throat> yeah, we're going to do a budget adjustment. It's going to come from... It's going to come out of salaries over into that. It's just going to be a, a transfer of money. Sounds very risky for salaries. Uh, you know, uh, my uh, position is uh, that if you knew uh, that you had this $16,000 that was owed uh, in, uh, in 14, apparently, uh, you got the bill in December. So that should have been uh, in December it, it was uh, said you know, 12, 30, 14. Uh, but you, know, you got the bill in April, uh, but you just paid it in July. July? Is it mm -hmm. paid in April? Okay, here it said need budget adjustment and the amount 728.15. What it is, we're fixing to run low of money in our uh, heavy equipment maintenance due to the fact that we've had several breakdowns like on our milling machine and all. And so we're gonna run out of money before the end of the year. So we're requesting this adjustment to keep us from running out of money and being back here later, trying to explain again why we need the money. You paid in April. No, we paid it in July. So you No, paid we paid it in April. Then why are you just asking us for a budget adjustment? So if you hadn't run low, we wouldn't have to worry about it. Right. Uh, but, uh, but you were aware that you had this outstanding bill, right? Correct. And I also asked that it be paid out of the 14 budget, and it was not paid out of the 14 budget. So therefore, the money was transferred over to carry over into this year, where that the budget we have, we allotted a certain amount for each category under the headings of what it goes to. Mr. Roden, I'm a budget man. I just don't like it when we lay over budget, lay over money and ask for it too late. And that's how we get behind and that's how we in, in, get caught up in traps. We wonder where the money was and why we end up can't pay payroll. I'm hoping the city never reached that point, but that's how we become to the point where we can't make payrolls. That's what will happen to some of our closer friends. Question. Any of the comments? Question. So, so actually the money is in your budget. You're just moving it around. At the money is actually in the budget. We're just asking to transfer it over to that account so that we won't run low in that account. So it is in your budget. You're just moving it over to pay that bill. Any other questions? Thank you. <coughs> May we have roll call, please? Adam Bryant? Aye. Alwyn Walker? No. Alvin Brown? No. Senior? No. Alvin May? Aye. Alvin Brown, Jr.? Aye. Fails. <coughs> okay. That concludes the uh, budget adjustments. I just want to remind everybody that on Thursday the 10th at 1 p.m. we will have a budget preview for the coming year to evaluate revenues, projected expenses, because you know we've done a lot of things during the year that have actually created new expenditures <coughs> that we're going to have to find a way to fund. And also revenues are being projected to be pretty much flat, if not down just a little bit for next year. So Time we're going to... One o'clock, the tenth, in the mayor's conference room, and uh, Mr. Miller will have uh, information provide to provide to us so that we can all get on the same page and see where we need to go for 2016. Okay. At this time, I'd like to call forward Mr. John Wilkerson to discuss a settlement option that's being presented to the council.
not Mike Mosley, as I think uh, many of y'all were expecting before I got here. It seems I got the pillar in the way. I don't see that well. Um, I was down here for another case. I represent y'all in um, another lawsuit. I think I've talked to some of you in pre previous litigation. Uh, I am here on uh, the Kenny Barkins versus Pine Bluff case, which Mike Mosley uh, has been litigating, who's the partner of mine down at the Municipal League. It's against Miss uh, Detective, S Detective Stevenson, uh, Jeremy Funderburg, and Officer Hillard. Um, the case, basically, Mike has talked to everybody involved, and based on the documentation and on what, um, how he felt the case would end up going, he engaged in settlement talks with the other uh, party, and they came to an agreement to settle the case for $8,000. $800 of that would come from y'all, since the municipal league would pay 90% of the settlement. And so uh, I'm here uh, with my, on behalf of Mike to ask you <coughs> to accept the settlement offer of essentially $800 to the city of Palm Bluff. Motion, okay. We need to make, someone make a motion. I make a motion that uh, we pay the $800 to sell this case. Second. Okay, it's been properly moved and second that um, a settlement for the city in the amount of $800 uh, regarding the Barkins versus City of Pine Bluff settlement be approved. When did this take place? Pardon me? When did this take place? Just recently. So the, the settlement the took place. Settlement the, recent, yeah, no, the incident place. occurred back when in did the incident 2012. Okay. You know what month? Uh, September. February? February. February 26th. I, you, I don't know that to be fact, but it just seems trustworthy. <laughs> You've got a copy of it right here. It's February right here. February 6, 2012. Okay. Okay. Any other questions or comments? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Thank you, sir. Thank you all very much. That concludes Ways and Means, Mayor. Thank you. Ordinances and resolutions, Alderman Brummett. Mayor, the ordinance resolutions committee met prior to the meeting. Uh, the, spon <laughs> the sponsors have requested that we pull resolutions three, four, five, resolution number eight, and resolutions 12, 13, and 14. And we have one new one to add. We have a re resolution recognizing the eighth annual East Side Neighborhood Celebration. All right, we're not going to put that one on tonight, so that will, that will conclude the uh, ordinance resolutions. Okay, thank you, sir. Economic and, and community development, Alderman Brown, Sr. Mayor, we did have a meeting, thank you. We did have a meeting on last week, and it was almost a slip of my memory that we did, we actually uh, agreed to accept a, some back money from uh, HUD, I believe. If Mr. Magic would come forward, that would be very good. Here. Yeah, and I'll make it brief because we covered a lot of things and several other uh, items on the agenda. We did meet last Tuesday, and uh, the purpose of the meeting was to accept and do a budget adjustment for the $201,365 that we received back from the first payment that we made to HUD from the Treasury Department. <coughs> we did get the monies back, uh, and we needed the council approval to accept the budget adjustment to add it into our budget for 2015. At the same time, uh, our 2015, 2014 carryover had not happened for this year because we received our funds late last year, and we also received them late this year, but not as late as we did last year. So what we did, we went back and we added all our carryovers in, plus the uh, money re was, that was repaid, <coughs> made the budget adjustment, and those numbers that you see now, now match up with 
have an IDIS, which is the federal funding system, as well as the New World system, which <coughs> has been a problem over the years. We managed to do it with the help of Steve and Lori. Uh, so the numbers that you're seeing are actually budgeting in what IDIS shows with the federal government and what we show. Uh, we also, there was a couple other issues that we spoke of with the $500 deposit, which will come up later, as well as increasing the emergency grant funding from 7500 which we probably had in 15 years to $10,000. So basically, that was the gist of, of the meeting in a, in a nutshell. Thank you, Mr. Matthews. That was a very good meeting. Oh, yeah, Mr. Matthews, I have a question uh, because we uh, had agreed upon um, $100,000 for the improvement of uh, the three parks and if this budget is approved, uh, will that $100,000, we have a problem getting that $100,000 back out of your budget to go into a separate fund? Well, uh, for the we, we, we can't move it to another fund because the checks are wrote out of IDIS in the New World. It'll have to stay in the IDIS till we actually write checks out. We can't take it out of IDIS out of the federal grant and place it in another. Uh, they won't allow us to do it. We can designate whatever dollars amounts uh, for that project, but you know, at the same time, we have to finish our town report and we have to put that playground system in that, that April was telling us about. So I'm pretty sure we'll be close, but if you let us run the numbers and get it back to you. No, uh, uh, no now, if you're, you're running playground equipment for Townsend Park, right? Yes, we have to put it in in order to keep the state grant. Uh, does it have to be Townsend Park or is it parks, period? No, it has to be Townsend Park because it was a part of the state grant to put for the, for the lights as well as <coughs> part of the project that went on at the Splash Park. It, they were all tied into one. And that grant was about $400,000. And in that grant, it said that we would put a playground uh, equipment in at Townsend Park. And the funds are not there. That's why we have to put that in out of this in order to keep our funds from the state, else we'll be fined about $100,000, I believe. Okay, now, you, you're saying that, um, in, er, it, explain this again, of how it came about that you were supposed to have a certain amount of playground equipment in Townsend Park, and that was supposed to come through what? That, that came from the grant that Parks and Rec received okay. to improve the ball fields, to improve, make the improvement at the splash pad, as well as put playground equipment at Townsend Park. Okay. But right now, we are not speaking of those funds. We are speaking of the funds that was returned back from HUD. Yes. And to, so that's where I'm talking about getting $100,000 from. Well, but the problem that the parks is having is that they don't have the money to put the playground equipment in. We'll put it in, and they'll get their last reimbursement, which you can probably reallocate it back out. They don't have the money to buy that park equipment. Okay. Uh, well, you know, maybe what we need to do is get, uh, because the three parks that we are talking about, they doesn't, they don't have any equipment. Oh, I understand. And uh, so, uh, my suggestion is that we get the hundred thousand from the money that came back from HUD, and then uh, when parks <coughs> get their money, you know, because you still have over a hundred thousand dollars left from. Uh, from that HUD uh, refund, right? Right. And uh, so it, it's split up then, and all that that you don't uh, get to, the, all that that you, is needed after that, uh, that, uh, you know, you can uh, get that from other sources. Well, uh, our first commitment was to complete the ball field with the bleachers mm -hmm. and the fencing. But but the bleachers and the fencing doesn't have anything to do with this money that came back yes, from HUD. Yes, ma'am. Uh, but, but it wasn't designated for that. It, it, because, uh, we, well, we know that the money came back from HUD because of the money that we had to repay back. Exactly. So that's how it came back. Well, uh, if so you recall, we went before the committee earlier this year. We requested an additional $195,000 to complete the ball field. Right. The committee only gave us $38,000 saying that we used the money that we get back from Hood to complete.
sweep the ball field. You know, but how how much uh, did you have prior to that? Prior to for, that? For the park. Uh, you didn't have any. Uh, well, for the ball you know, field, you did. Okay, well, we had, we, had, we had used all the money that the council had approved for the ball field. Okay, and that was how much? Oh, we probably spent right at a million dollars. Or more. Or more. I don't have the exact price. Uh -huh. I think more. Yes. Uh, but no, at, but at the same time, we found out that there are still some other things that are needed. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, uh, my uh, position is this. There's always going to be some things needed. Uh, but you know, it's, it's not fair to put everything uh, in Townsend Park. All the money that we keep bringing in is going to Townsend Park when we have uh, the, uh, the park down here on 6th Street, Hudson Park. Uh, that they don't have anything but two basketball goals, and they use that park every day. And the, uh, Mississippi Park, uh, they have two uh, rusted out swing sets. Uh, they don't have anything. And and I'm not sure what J.C. Jeffries uh, Park needs, but it's, you're talking about splitting $100,000 between three parks rather than putting, in, uh, compared to putting millions into uh, Townsend Park. You know, I understand that it's a baseball field and all that stuff, so they are getting more than the others. Oh, uh, Ms. Law, I'm not arguing the fact that they don't need it, mm -hmm. but I've kind of been working with Parks and Rec, and I was working off their request mm -hmm. as to how but, we kind of spend the money. Uh -huh. And I think April was going to make an assessment and kind of get back. I, I agree. I know Mississippi Park hadn't had an improvement since I've probably been here. Right. And, and I know the other say, parks say that's too. a long time, we know. Right, yes ma'am. But I would like to finish the ball field. Uh-huh, well, I would too, but I'd like to give them some equipment too uh, because you're talking about uh, minor uh, for those uh, parks uh, compared to major out there. I understand. Uh, if you would afford us to, to get you a report back, I think right now we just have it sitting there mm -hmm. until she gives us uh, an analyzation of what she needs at any field. No, I, I don't need reports. I need money. Well, I got the cost money. Report. Oh, good, good. That's what I'm trying to get. That's, the money. That's what I'm trying to get. Right. Because reports are not going to help any. Yes, uh, you know, the, uh, these people need yeah, the parks fixed. Well, I agree. And, to, and if you sign it off, I'll never see it again. I, I agree. And I, <laughs> and I do understand that when we were in that meeting on last Tuesday, that it was quoted that the money had to get into the reserve, into the treasurer first, and then later we would do what we have to do in in form of a resolution or some of that nature. But right yes. now we need to receive the money first. Is that correct? It, it is there. Okay. So we have to do the adjustment so that New World uh, will reflect that the money is there. Mm -hmm. uh, but that's why uh, that I had a resolution for it to go into an account for those parts. Uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Matthews, I'm going to let Ms. Walker twist your arm in April with that. I'm not I'm not tangling with that. I, I understand. I, I mean, Ms. Walker had the conversation. I, I think we can meet that medium. <coughs> but I, I'm just the financier on it. I, uh, she might have to twist April wrist on what needs to go where. But I have the money for whichever direction we go. Okay. Well, let us re all remember that we have 19 parks. So we can't just focus everything on three parks. Uh, well, so yeah, let's let's yeah, let's think about that as well. We're speaking of four parks. Well, and I'm, you know, in the meantime, if the three parks had not been bought up, you would be talking about one park. Well, actually, uh, which, we'd uh, probably which, be talking uh, about more parks. Park, but uh, that I ask for uh, the three <coughs> parks. We uh, and I know that it's a process that we have to go through. Everything is not going to be done at one time. Yes, ma'am. But if your know, Townsend Park is getting millions then some of the other parts can get something. Well, we're just trying and, to finish that park and, up. And, and we are sorry, yeah, we are trying to finish the park up. But in the meantime, the people that use those parks want something as well. Yes, ma'am, but so, we still need to finish after, up what we've already started. That's, uh, yeah, that's what I understand, because your focus is on Townsend Park. Well, it's, on, it's focused on completing the projects that have already been started and we need to complete. Uh-huh. Well, yeah. Any other questions for Mr. Matthews? Yes, I have. I have a I might well speak my piece on it too. Uh, and I'm in the fourth ward where Townsend Park is, and I'm very disappointed in it. Uh, for a million bucks, if you get a chance, go out there and look at it. 
I've never seen a baseball field, three baseball field with no press box. How do you call a game without a press box? I, I, I don't understand it. Tell, tell me, they've been working on the park for almost two years, and it looks a mess out there. And I don't, you can't tell me a million dollars have been spent out there. Now, I'm, I'm agreeing with all the women Walker. Go far as you can with that park because it's not going to be satisfactory. See, you all don't see this stuff, and they just be, we just be just rattling up here, and it doesn't make any sense. You can take a million dollars and go out there and build a whole neighborhood. If you go look at that park out there, that is pathetic. That is, that's, that's a shame for this city to say you spent a million bucks out there. Now, the rest of those parks need some money, and I'm going to support that $100,000 to put in the rest of those parks because the rest of our parks are a mess too. And we spend a million dollars every year and we call it park and recreation. And you can't, it's not, it's not family friendly. And we need to stop this stuff fooling these people in the city with their tax dollars. It's about like the convention center. They get $1.2 million a year and nothing going on over there. Downtown can, development. Can we, get, can we stay on. on the subject? Well, we well, need to stay on the subject. Well, you don't want people park. to know this stuff, but downtown development get $50,000 a year from the city of Pine Bluff. And that's a private organization. It's not even for Pine Bluff. Let's stay on the, let's stay on the subject, Because you know, they know I'm right. And y'all don't see this stuff going on up here. Any, any more questions for Mr. Matthews? When will Town any, Park be Thank finished? you, sir. You can sit down. <laughs> thank you, sir. Well, I'm asking him a question, Mayor. When will Town Park be finished? Because it's unacceptable for the uh, city and the Mr. citizens out there. Mr. May, let me ask you a question. See, every time I get up here, I have to listen to you ram bash about all these projects that are not done properly, projects that I've been in charge of, projects that I have reported to everybody every week. Personally, I don't appreciate it. But I'm going to answer your question. As soon as the council allocate this money, the park will be done. Thank you. Okay. Any other questions or comments? Hearing none, yes. let's. Um, Do we need a I vote? forgot what we we're need doing. It's, I'm still doing the committee what report. What are we doing? I'm in the committee report. It was my committee report. Do we need a motion to accept I, that money? I allowed it to go this far. It's We've already done that. The CBDG. We've done that. Okay. We've accepted the money. Oh, this is your report. Yeah, Hello. The committee report. I allowed that to happen. I guess. I don't know. You did. You, you're, you're the responsible person. Yeah, I'm responsible for that. So that cut my time. To, I'm not going to talk tonight. Yeah. That complete my, my <laughs> report. Thank you, sir. Okay. Public health and welfare. Alderman Brown, Jr. Are no. you going to? You, you really going to say anything? No report. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Public Works, all yes, the uh, I do want to commend Mr. Ken Johnson with uh, wastewater utility. And it's, it's in the packet, too, on the, uh, on the agenda, item number 11, and it's enough room for everybody to be a co-sponsor uh, for uh, receiving the Platinum Six Peak Performance Award. And that's a great accomplishment for, for Mr. Ken Johnson, but that's all I wanted to say about that. And once again, thank you, Mr. Johnson, and thank you, Council, for listening as well. Thank you, sir. Development and planning, Alderman Boyd's not here. Traffic and aviation, um, administration, public safety, Alderwoman Walker. Well, we, uh, public safety, had a meeting uh, this afternoon. Uh, Alderman Brummett and myself was present. Um, <coughs> and uh, we got a report from each one of the fire chiefs, um, the fire, I mean, each one of the chiefs, the fire chief. Uh, gave us a report on the, uh, the fires and the services that they provide, and as well as uh, the police department did the same. That's it. Okay, are you going to? Okay, thank you. On to on to ordinances and resolutions. Mayor, we have an ordinance repealing ordinance number four four six seven and abolishing the Pine Bluff Civic Auditorium Complex Commission and for related purposes, up for the first reading. Whereas ordinance number 4467 adopted April 7, 1975, created the Pine Bluff Civic Auditorium Complex Commission, consisting of seven positions to manage, operate, and keep in good state of repair the Pine Bluff Municipal Auditorium and related facilities. And whereas the commission is moribund more with only three members at this time, and the public interest would best be served by its abolished abolition 
and the facility directly administered by the city government. And whereas Arkansas Code Section 14-141-103 expressly grants the governing body of the municipality which created such a commission the authority to repeal the ordinance which created the body which effectively abolishes the commission. Now therefore be it ordained by the City Council of the City of Pine Bluff, Arkansas, Section 1, that Ordinance Number 4467 passed April 7, 1975 is hereby repealed and the Pine Bluff Civic Auditorium Complex Commission created thereby is abolished. Section two, that all ordinances or any parts thereof in conflict with this ordinance are repealed to the extent of the conflict. Section three, the ordinance being of general or permanent nature, the clerk shall cause its publication as required by law. Section four, the ordinance shall take effect on the 31st day after its passage. I'll place it on the calendar. We have an ordinance amending section 26-155 of the Code of Ordinances <laughs> of the City of Pine Bluff, Arkansas regarding downtown limited time parking, penalty for exceeding time limit to add subsection D concerning parking along Barracue Street near and in front of the Jefferson County Courthouse and for related purposes up for the first reading. Whereas sufficient public parking exists in Jefferson County Courthouse area to allow removal of any time constraints for parking along Barracuda Street from Main Street to West Pine Street. Now therefore be it ordained by the City Council of the City of Pine Bluff, Arkansas, Section 1, Section 26, 155 of the Code of Ordinances of the City of Pine Bluff, Arkansas is amended to add the following as new subsection D. D, notwithstanding subsections A and C of this section, or any other provision of this chapter, there shall be no time limit for vehicle parking along Barracuda Street from its intersection with Main westward towards its intersection with Pine Street unless the vehicle is abandoned, junked, or inoperable motor vehicle as defined in section 1652 of this code, in which case the vehicle may be removed as provided by law. Section two, all ordinances or parts thereof in conflict with this ordinance are repealed to the extent of the conflict. Section three, this ordinance being of general or permanent nature, it should be published as prescribed by law. We'll place it on the calendar. Moving on to number six, a resolution authorizing the increase in the maximum amount of the grant in the emergency rehabilitation program administered through the Economic and Community Development Department. Whereas the current cap of $7,500 for an emergency grant for residential housing rehabilitation is no longer adequate due to the increased cost of construction and materials, and whereas the cap should be increased to $10,000. Now, therefore, be it resolved by the City Council of the City of Pine Bluff, Arkansas, the Economic and Community Development Department is authorized and directed to increase the maximum amount of the grant available for emergency rehabilitation of residential housing from $7,500 to $10,000 effective immediately. Move for adoption. Second. It's been properly moved and second that a resolution authorizing the increase in the maximum amount of the grant in the emergency rehabilitation program administered through the Economic and Community Development Department. Floor is now open for discussion. Um, Mayor, I had a discussion uh, with uh, Mr. Kirkendall. Uh, Do what? I'm sorry, was that, was that a question? Just a minute. Oh, okay. Okay, Any other discussions or questions? Did she ever, welcome, did she ever come in on number six? Number six. Yes, sir. Actually, we discussed this in my committee over a month ago, and it's just coming to us. But so it's already been discussed and come out of the committee. You were, were you there? Right, right. I was there. Okay. 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 Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was there. I was at the meeting. That's what it was. I, since I was on the uh, community development committee, I just want to know if I can be added right. a sponsor. Yeah, it's been discussed. Yeah. Yes. That's why I want to be a sponsor as well. Okay, any of the co-sponsor rather. Any of the comments, questions? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Move on to number seven. A 
resolution authorizing the requirement of a deposit <coughs> with an application for residential rehabilitation through the Economic and Community Development Department. Whereas a number of applicants for residential rehabilitation failed to carry through with the application, resulting in much preliminary work performed by the Economic and Community Development Department going for naught, and whereas the requirement that the applicant submit a $500 deposit with the application will reduce the number of unserious or non-compliant applicants. Now, therefore, be it resolved by the City Council of the City of Pine Bluff, Arkansas, the Economic and Community Development Department is authorized and directed to require each application for residential housing rehabilitation, a $500 deposit to demonstrate the seriousness of the applicant to carry through with the application and to defray costs of preliminary work relating to the application. Move for adoption. Second. It's been properly moved and second that a resolution authorizing the requirement of a deposit with an application for residential rehabilitation through the Economic and Community Development Department. Floor is now open for discussion. Mayor. Yes, sir. This too come, ha, ha, had come through my committee and it passed with our committee, but they do pass for the city council. It is, uh, it is necessary that they do the deposit to, to deprive people from uh, having the city to spend money that, and then they decided not to go through the program. This money is refundable into the service of that contract. I think I'm doing this right, Mr. Matthews. Yes, sir. Very good. Okay, thank you. <coughs> the word rental should be in front. Okay, yes, yes. okay. So that Very you know, these are for the landlords, not, right. not our regular homeless. Yes, ma'am. Thank you, Mr. Matthews. Any of the comment? Yes, yes, sir. As a member of the community as well, Chairman Brown, I would like to be a co-sponsor on this as well. You may. Thank you. Okay. All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Okay. Now we'll move to number nine, a resolution reappointing Diane Tatum to the Pine Bluff Jefferson County Port Authority. Where is the term of Diane Tatum as a member of the Pine Bluff Jefferson County Port Authority Board has expired, and whereas the council desires that Ms. Tatum be reappointed to another term on the board. Now, therefore, be it resolved by the City Council of the City of Pine Bluff, Arkansas, that the reappointment of Diane Tatum to the Pine Bluff Jefferson County Port Authority to serve a term to expire May 31st, 2018 is hereby approved and confirmed. Move for adoption been properly moved and second that a resolution reappointing Diane Tatum to the Pine Bluff Jefferson County <coughs> Authority. Floor is now open for discussion. Hearing none, all in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Here we have a resolution reappointing Joseph Garriger Jr. to the Pine Bluff Jefferson County Port Authority. Did you pull that one? Oh, on the last person, was that, was she here? Is she actually here? Ms. Diane Ms. Tatum. Ms. Tatum. Here. I guess we want to no, acknowledge her if she here. was here. Okay. Uh, Ms. Tatum, you was at one time the director over Entergy, and she retired from that. Okay. I just wanted to make sure okay. she was present that we acknowledged her. Okay. No. <clears throat> Where is the term of Joseph uh, Geringer Jr. as a member of Pine Bluff Jefferson County? Port Authority Board has expired, and whereas the council desires that Mr. Geringer be reappointed to another term on the board, now therefore be it resolved by the City Council of the City of Pine Bluff, Arkansas, that the reappointment of Joseph Geringer Jr. to the Pine Bluff Jeff Jefferson County Port Authority to serve a term to expire May 31st, 2018 is hereby approved and confirmed. Move for adoption. Second. It's been properly moved and second that a resolution reappointing Joseph Geringer Jr. to the Pine Bluff Jefferson County Port Authority. Floor is now open for discussion. Hearing none, all in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. We have a resolution congratulating the Pine Bluff Wastewater Utility and Manager <coughs> Ken Johnson for receiving the Platinum <coughs> Six Award from the National Association of Clean Water Agencies and expressing the appreciation of the city for its outstanding performance. Whereas the Pine Bluff Wastewater Utility is recognized by national and state agencies for excellence in its operation and management, and whereas the sixth consecutive year the utility has been awarded the prestigious 
Platinum Six Award from the National Association of Clean Water Agencies, which exemplifies its superior performance and commitment to environmental compliance resulting from the hard work and outstanding management of the utility. And whereas the City of Pine Bluff is fortunate to have such professional expertise running the utility, and the City Council desires to congratulate the utility for this award. Now, therefore, be it resolved by the City Council of the City of Pine Bluff, Arkansas, that we, the Mayor and the members of the City Council, hereby extend our congratulations to the personnel of the Pine Bluff Wastewater Utility and its manager, Ken Johnson, for receipt of the Platinum Six Award from the National Association of Clear Water Agencies, and further express the appreciation of the City for the outstanding <coughs> performance of the utility in its operation. Move for adoption. Second. <clears throat> it's been properly moved and second that a resolution congratulating the Pine Bluff Wastewater Utility and Manager Ken Johnson for receiving the Platinum Six Award from the National Association of Clean Water Agencies and expressing the appreciation of the city for its outstanding performance. The floor is now open for discussion. Uh, Mayor, I <coughs> um, there is a slot on here for everyone's name to go on and it will be before uh, before he receives it and um, and that you, because we all want to commend him from running uh, such a well uh, organized and functional um, organization over there any other comments he's back there I definitely want to be on it and I congratulate Ken and appreciate all the great things he does not only at wastewater but with other things with Grider Field and other things that he's involved in thank you Ken thank you sir Miss Horton would you like to read the proclamation at this time Mr. Johnson would you like to come forward with your family <coughs> oh we need to vote first <laughs> all in favor say aye aye any opposed Motion carries. <coughs> this is one of our outstanding department heads who achieves in every single area. This is not the first time. I think within six months he also received another congratulation, outstanding award for the services that he does. Uh, it is outstanding for Pine Bluff to have such a great, great person to be one of the leaders in our city. So we thank you so much. Proclamation, whereas the Platinum Six Award was awarded to Pine Bluff Wastewater Utility and Mr. Ken Johnson, this was a tremendous team effort of wastewater 50 dedicated employees who made this incredible achievement possible. And whereas the Platinum Six Award recognizes 100% compliance with the federal discharge permits over a consecutive six year period, this award is only given to facilities with a consistent record of, of full compliance during the consecutive six year period. And whereas the city of Pine Bluff is the only city in the state of Arkansas to receive this accommodation. Because of wastewater collective efforts, this distinction can become a significant factor in, a, in attracting new business to our great city. Isn't that wonderful? <coughs> Whereas Mr. Ken Johnson was the director of Pine Bluff Wastewater Utility, has an uh, admirable history as he is an employee of 30 two years and 15 years as general manager. He is also a class four wastewater <laughs> operator. He has earned his bachelor's degree in biology, his master's in public administration. He is married to his lovely wife, Rita Johnson, and they have two beautiful daughters. In addition, he is a member of the Indiana Street Baptist Church and his personal passion in his off time is aviation and flying airplanes. Now, therefore, I, Debbie Hollingsworth, the mayor of the city of Pine Bluff, along with all of the city councilmen, Bill Brummett, George Stepps, Thelma Walker, Charles Board, Glenn Brown Sr., Lord Holcomb Jr., Glenn Brown Jr., and Stephen Mays, congratulate you 
in the city of Pine Bluff, we all <coughs> really, really appreciate <coughs> everything that you're doing and going to be doing for our city. We thank you. Good evening, Mayor and members of the council. I'm certainly honored to receive this on behalf of Pineville Wastewater Utility and on behalf of the uh, Utility Commission. Uh, I would be uh, remiss if I didn't mention that the 50 employees made this award possible. We work very uh, hard on a day-to-day -day basis. As you know, the type of work that we do <coughs> in the trenches in the sewer system, being able to uh, manage a, a collection system that's 120 years old, a wastewater treatment plant that uh, has gone through about three different upgrades, but uh, yes, it's part of the job. But again, I can say that we look, we, we're always concerned about clean water and making sure that we have full compliance with EPA standards. So again, hats off to all the employees. And it's something that the city of Pine Bluff would be very proud of. You mentioned about industrial development, economic development, some things that we can do. When an industry comes to town, that's one of the first thing they inquire about is that our compliance record. So we have a 100% compliance record, and hopefully that will be a selling point to us acquiring new industries and facilities here in the city of Pine Bluff. Again, thank you. Thank you, yes. Mayor, members of the council. Thank you. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes. Mr. Johnson, <coughs> you spoke well of your employees, but one of your right-hand men, David Dean, anytime I call him, he, he's, he does what he's supposed to do. If, if, if he can't fix it, he called the other people. So, I, you know, you did well to talk about your employees, and I want to give David a pat on the back because he, if I call him, he, he gets on what he has to do. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay. That concludes our agenda, Mayor. I'd like to remind everybody about the meeting Thursday at 1 o'clock for the budget pre preview. That concludes our agenda, sir. So okay. Do we have a motion to dismiss? I move we adjourn. Okay. Do we have a second? Second. Properly moved and second that the meeting be adjourned. All in favor say aye. Aye. Any so opposed? We still have some, still have some money in them. Meeting. Speakers. Meeting. Pull those. Yeah. Meeting adjourned.